picture of what it was like in my addiction. Um, it was an absolute nightmare. It wasn't a life whatsoever. Um, it was just like walking dead. Throughout my addiction, I've, I've isolated myself away from my family. Do you know what I mean? And not being, not being a son to my mum, to my dad, not being a brother to my sisters, do you know, not being an uncle. I've missed my nieces and nephews growing up. The biggest regret I've got is drinking when my kids live with me. Uh, my addiction was alcohol. Uh, and towards the end, before I came into treatment, it got really, really bad. Really, really bad. I just wasn't functioning as a human being. Being an addict, really. And I just realised how bad it had got, stuff that I never really thought I'd do before, you know what I mean? Uh, and then they were doing that stuff. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I've robbed a lot of people and, and, and uh, I suppose one of my biggest regrets is, is, you know, going through someone's door and beating them up, you know, because they owed me money, you know, so in front of the wife and kid. You can never come home at the end of the line. Feel bad. What am I working on that now? Um, I reg regret a lot of things, what I did in addiction with my children. Um, I'm trying to work on it now. It weren't living, it was just day by day, just doing the same thing every single day. I spent a lot of, a lot of time in prison over, over the past 20 years. So I'm not, not, so being being away from from my family, you know, my mum, I love my mum to bits. You know what I mean? Like every son should, and uh, but I've just not been been there for her. But then that waking up in the morning and the physical feeling ill physically, but mentally the not knowing what I've done, and then suddenly seeing texts on my phone, and just thinking, crap, what has you know what guilt, the shame of things that I was saying to people. Um, since the age of 11, 11 I was on gas and at first it was a laugh, it was fun, you know. And then as I had my first daughter, Olivia, everything changed. It's like I had to become an adult. Drink always come first. It, it just ruined my life, really. You know, uh, 48 soon, yeah. And all this started way back in the mid 90s, and I had a fantastic career then as a teacher. I, you know, it was going places, you know, but the alcohol took over. I think when I got abused of my uncle, I think that changed my life towards men and craving for love of men and alcohol. I couldn't cope with any of it, just couldn't cope with life. So I just left and went down to London uh, for several months, just living on the streets and oof, nobody knew where I was, not even my family. And you know, that shame and the guilt I'm not that I've got for what I did is really bad now. You know, my mum not knowing where I was, whether I was still alive. Looking back I just it's just shameful. Shameful and guilt ridden, you know, but uh, you know that's not the person I am today, so but um yeah. I'm not, uh, not proud of the things I've done. I'm not proud of the things I've done at all. Running from um, just who I was. Just who I was. I didn't like who I was. Um, 
you know, I think like it was. I don't want to talk about that. Because yeah. I didn't have no confidence, I was no self worth, no pride. I didn't love myself, I hated myself. Like I said, my family's always, you know, every after, because I've done this a few times, been in different treatment centres and different different things, and uh, and they're they're always behind me. <sighs> yeah, they're always behind me, one hundred percent, when I do this. Doing things that wasn't wasn't right. Turning me back on my children. That that was the main one in addiction, you know. Walking away, that was the hardest one. When the children went to live with family members, I think my drinking got worse. They had no no reason to be in the living. My pride had come. So I asked the judge to go to prison because I, I, I thought that was the only way for me to seek help. Um, I went and did five weeks in prison. Um, they offered me deep. Changed my life. I knew that D will be the kind of program that will get out of me what needs to get out of me, that would help me to look at myself, you know, and it's helped me recognise, you know, who I am as a person. I felt vulnerable. Um, I felt raw. I felt, uh, but in a good, good way, do you know what I mean? Not like, oh, sh do you know what I mean? They're all, they're all, all looking at me and all thinking stuff. It wasn't that this time, it was like, so they're, they're here to help me, these people. I'm kind of sort of out of my group. Started by um, looking at myself, um, accepting what I've done, accepting who I've hurt, Accepting that it wasn't really me because it was addiction and realising that this is me now. Yeah, I think I'm learning, you know, I'm every day is a learner. And I'm not that horrible monster that I thought I was. I'm a human being that has feelings. And it's strong. They just want me to be me. So. I started looking a lot more at, you know, number one, it was my choice to pick up and drink, but number two, good grief, how have I hurt everybody else around me? Have I hurt my family, my friends? You know, the consequences of what my drinking did. I've always found it hard to not make friends, but have friends, keep friends, do you know? Um, yeah, and, and I suppose annoying, Knowing me, no, do you know what I mean? Not, not having all these deep, dark secrets, do you know what I mean? Scary. Being able to trust people with my issues. You know, something happened where I suddenly felt comfortable to be able to say to someone, this is how I feel, this is it, you know, and tell them uh, something that I've had great difficulty in doing all my life. 
try to pour years of addiction, it's not going to be any better overnight, is it? So it's just got to be positive. And... I'm more aware of myself, I'm more aware of my emotions, my feelings, what they mean. I'm able to express to people how I'm feeling. Um, I'm able to get anger out in an appropriate manner. It's good. It is. It's good. Yeah. Can't think of. Can't think of an intellectual word to use then, but it's just good. You know, it's really good. Every day is a new day. As you say. But... And I've learned that I deserve recovery. That I, I am a nice person. That I've got a future. So I've got a lot to give to others. Another thing is, is having my family back again. Do you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not wanting to, not wanting to dash that hope again. Now, do you know? Definitely not wanting to dash that hope. I want, I want to be the son and the, and the brother and the uncle I know I can be. Starting to like myself. Starting to look after myself. Taking responsibility for my own actions. One of the most amazing things is that I've realised that a lot of the stuff that I've been through in my life, I look at now as, in a way, a positive because it's experience I've got that I can use in a positive way in the future to help others. You know, not to run. Definitely not to run. Perhaps going through those similar situations and help them not to make the same mistakes that I made. Just face life as it is. I really do need to thank my mum, my sister, my dad, all, all my family. I'd like to thank my ma, my mum. Uh, they've stuck with me through all this. The number of times I've let them down. Or... And my brother, my children. You know, they've been there with me throughout all this. I really thank them for their support there, for me not being there after everything I've done for them. Uh, and uh, First and foremost is my counsellor, Jane, do you know? Um, Do you know, he'd never give up on me. Um, <clears throat> yeah, James, definitely. I'd like to thank James, my counsellor. I'd like to thank Eddie, my counsellor. Uh, and, you know, thank James so much. Just for his honesty and the way that he is as a counsellor. I want to thank my group for, uh, for being there, for challenging me. I'd like to thank Debbie from the Women's Centre. I need to thank John, John who did ramp, for starting all this process off. I want to thank my mum for, uh, for always being there, always being there. For all my peers, especially Vicky. Um, She's been a diamond towards me, you know, me and Vicky together. Considering any of this, we are the peers on the themselves. I'd like to thank my Asian, Asian caretaker, Paul. I'd like to thank Anthony. You know, but, uh, you know Cheryl, Brian. I was going to leave someone out, though. <laughs> um, Scott, Lee, um, Marcus and... Sean, who were there in the early days. I'd like to thank Anthony, part of my group, uh, for, for being able to talk to me, for trusting me. And just knowing that I've had those people around me, you know, it's just such a help. I'd like to thank my housemate, Lee. He's, uh, Joy's my friend. Family at church, Lorelli, she's a, you know, 
Uh, they've been a support to me. There's a lot more people I've probably forgotten. Most of them, or just can't bring them to mind, but there's so many people that have helped me. If there's anybody who's kind of maybe watching this, told me who's in addiction, I'd just say give it a go. Give this program a go and give it, and give it your all. Do you know what I mean? There is a way out. Just thanks, guys. <laughs> thanks, guys, for all of this, you know. You're all amazing. I'm glad to have my life back. I'm glad to be a part of life. A life worth living. Now you can feel it in your chest.